Welcome to Newfound Reality podcast episode number four. I'm outside and it's a little bit windy. I hope the microphone doesn't pick up the wind as much and you can actually hear well. <laughs> I'm a little bit tired, honestly, of this particular uh, podcast, but I have a couple of more episodes before I conclude it and move on to another one, which should be more fun. Uh, I want to talk more about love rather than lust. But we'll leave that for another podcast. I'm more and more uh, engaging myself into this kind of uh, area of life. It's more it's of more interest to me you know, to appeal to human heart than to human logic because uh, we have been brainwashed. (laughs) Seriously, I think if there is some truth to be conveyed, it could only be applied through heart, which is why my own heart broke. You know, I realized so many illusions that I have been fed my whole life through food, through emotions, through conditioning, stress, anxiety, that's all been induced by the state that we live in and, you know, it's unavoidable. So nevertheless, uh, again, back in 2019, while going through my own separation and uh, hanging out with my good late friend, Glenn Downey, we just spend so much time thinking how the world will change and we realize that through whatever the new world order is propagating this is what's going to happen we came up with these two characters <laughs> uh, i was a uh, you know an ambassador of bosnia and herzegovina with the, with the united nations who was in charge of depopulation agenda so we were trying to come up with the way to get rid of as many people as possible in the most humane and eco-friendly way. And so far, the best thing that we as society have come up with is mass graves, which is exactly what was used in Bosnian war. My goodness, I mean, for some reason, there's a, pop- there's a part of our population that thinks that we are overpopulated. There's way too many people. Uh, they are propagating this idea that we need to get rid of 85% of the population. Wow. In order for the internet of all things to you know, become a thing, so in order for all of us to become a part of this like AI or human 2.0 reality, we need to you know decrease the number of users we just have way too many people in order for us to actually all of us be in this gridlock imagine if you know 8 billion people get chipped and they try to go to walmart <laughs> the system would collapse seriously i mean or if you want to have self driving cars which we already have and if you have 1 you know billion self driving cars it's it's a logistical nightmare to do things like that so obviously uh, there is a problem with the actual share number of people and the users so in order for us to achieve this new world order reality with uh, you know full integration of ai and humanity into a human 2.0 we actually need to decrease a number of users so everything that's happening around the world is actually working really well into the you know arms and hands of the creators of our world look at the wars i remember when the latest war in ukraine started you know everybody was up in arms for the first couple of months and i knew exactly that the war would go on for about four years which is what usually wars go for you know unless you're talking about Yemen which you know has had the war for the last six seven or eight years or Afghanistan which has had the war for the last 30 40 years you know the, the problem is that our economy is created in such a way that in order for us to have this free healthcare and thanks God for that 
somebody else on the other side of the world has to actually suffer. Profit is everything. We have to make money one way or another in order to support the economy that we have here. It's very, very complicated, very, very complex. I don't want to get into all that. But uh, some of the things that need to change in order for us to either achieve a new reality without being integrated into AI is to actually think of the ways that we can help each other. So one of them would be to legalize sex work and romance. By sex work, I don't only mean the actual physical part of, of, of sex, but also romance. If we find a way that we can actually fulfill our needs in a meaningful way, right? Uh, a lot of us, like I said, need just a hug. We need somebody to talk to and friends are not doing it. We cannot do that. I mean, there are certain issues that I cannot discuss with my friends. I cannot go up to my friend and ask for a hug every time I want one. I mean, I should be able to, but it doesn't really work like that. My friends also have families, they have work. So do I, it doesn't really work. Uh, what most homeless people and addict addicted people need is love and connection. They want somebody to talk to. They want somebody to, to care, really. And that happens to actually through sex, seriously. It's that simple. By having somebody to, you know, who is going to be with you physically, you're going to fulfill your other needs spiritually. You know, in a perfect world, of course, that should be one person who, who, who fulfills all your needs, but the reality is far from that, far from that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm an old fashioned romantic, I'm an old fashioned human. Of course, I still believe in love and all that, you know, but I've seen enough to know that it doesn't really work. So once we have that kind of, you know, taken care of, once we have a way to, to, to fulfill our basic needs, then we can talk about our spiritual needs or about some other things, right? Then we think about having a relationship or a family or a marriage if you can achieve your whatever sexual needs or other romantic needs through different ways and you still find somebody who actually you really care about you know when you develop romantic feelings for and you want to have a relationship with then the government should be aware of it because you should basically say, okay, from now on, I don't want to live alone. I want to live with somebody else. And we want to have a family. We want to have children. The government, please help us. And the government says, sure. Yeah, because you guys are cool. You got jobs. You got good you know, future ahead of you. We're going to help you and support you. We're going to provide you with, with lessons, with programs, with people who can help you uh, reach this union uh, together where you can raise your children together. We're going to help you along the way so you can, you know, have children that are healthy and then they can help our society. So in that way, number two uh, issue is definitely uh, that kind of proactive, holistic act holistic approach towards the family unit in which there should be some accountability. We cannot leave people on their own to, to fend for themselves. You know, I remember living in South Korea and uh, working for like, you know, 10 hours a day to support my family and then getting home and my wife would expect me to be, you know, this prince charming and I'm like, my God, I'm dying. There's so much I have to do. I need some sort of help. You know, we need to be able to, 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 to create economy in which everybody will work four days a week and then have three days off, you know. And regardless of what we do, like, in, you know, I'll talk later about the emotional currency, how there is a need that everybody should have $2,000 a month, whether you're a CEO or a janitor. I know it doesn't work, but why should Messi get $70,000 for kicking the ball once? It doesn't make sense. The CEO of a company will get, you know, fifteen thousand dollars an hour where the janitor gets fifteen i always argue that in every club that i play music the most important person in that club was the dishwasher that nobody ever talked about because people see the musician people see the bartender you know and enjoy themselves nobody ever thinks about that poor man who's down there in that pit washing dishes day in and day out for twelve dollars an hour
want to see his glory he doesn't get paid enough he doesn't get any glory i mean it's not cool man and he's the most important freaking person of that you know that that whole organization without the dishwasher screw the musicians seriously man i mean that's what it is it's like looking at a rock and roll band if you have a rock and roll band the drummer is just as important as a bass player as a guitar player you know or as a singer but we have all focused just on the bloody singer <laughs> Reminds me quickly of this joke, you know, when the rock and roll band plays and the singer sings and he goes, wow, look at all these people, they came to see me, I'm the best, you know, the guitar player is looking, and there's like 100 people, 20 bucks each, that's like $2,000, we're only gonna get like 500 bucks each, he's kind of in it for the money. You know, the drummer is like, he think the drums and he's thinking to himself like, my God, I'm the beast. Look, I'm killing these drums. Everybody's looking at me and dancing to my beat. And the bass player is there just going, C, G, D, C, G, D. <laughs> Remembering the chords. It, it's, a, it's a musical joke. Those of you who play music will understand. Uh, long story. So yes, the second thing that has to happen basically is that, you know, we need to find a way to support our families along the way, support our relationships. And there should be some kind of input into what kind of things happen, you know. I remember growing up in former Yugoslavia at 15, we would have an aptitude or an attitude test to tell us what kind of uh, career would suit you. At 15 years old, you know whether this person is academically challenged or not whether this person should continue with the university or go get a trade, you know. That's also very important because we need to match, you know, the people with the jobs. Very important. Otherwise, we have a surplus of, of, of teachers and not enough something else. You know, you understand what I'm talking about. Like, for example, our medical service industry now. We are waiting forever to see a doctor. And we have so many doctors, yet somehow there's a problem finding them or nurses. The next thing, after that, the number three thing that is going to, you know, take place is the abolishment of private property. And again, this is something that I am not personally, you know, thinking of. I'm not an economist or a politician, but it is something that both Glenn, late Glenn and myself realize is going to happen. Eventually, all of this is going to become a government property or, you know, the property of the state which is great and you're going to be allocated your home and it's going to be okay so basically you're going to have to work four days a week you know whatever job the government decides you should do that could be anything and that's great you know why not maybe i become a gigolo <laughs> i'm sorry buddy but that's my job you know you just kiss your wife goodbye sorry honey i gotta go fulfill the you know duty <laughs> or your wife might become that why should you, you know, I mean, why should you worry about it? Why should you care about it? I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm talking out of my behind. Please forgive me. But again, I'm jumping ahead of time. So what it means to have, you know, no private property is basically that, you know, one person should not own 100 houses or 100 buildings like we have, for example, in any town. You have one person who owns you know 200 homes yet he doesn't even live in them or he doesn't even live in this province and he just either rents them or flips them for profit sells them for profit or rents them to people at like any price he wants and we have that we have people who have basically be, been born into the you know that particular segment of society and they they continue you know pierre trudeau justin trudeau you know, whatever, you know, just like in my country, you have the same thing. You have these dynasties that never go away. You know, feudalism is still pretty much the name of the game. The same people that own the land, own the animals, then own the means of production, and now own, you know, factories and, 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 and bars and restaurants and all that jazz, you know. It's so simple to see, you know, how the, the, the same people have been doing the same thing forever. But that doesn't work, you know? We have 
empty homes we have empty buildings that are not being taken care of yet we have people living on the street so that needs to be taken care of and i think that's a great idea honestly as long as you're a contributing member of your society you're going to be provided with your basic necessities and again back to the communist manifesto to each according to their needs and from each according to their ability but their ability has to be assessed and you know they have to find a way to deal with it i just saw a car that brings bad omen to me <laughs> it hurt my heart i hope everything is okay i really believe in these like kind of uh, little signs you know by the universe around me so that idea of abolishment of private property has to be extended into absolutely anything i really think that possession possessiveness is the root of our problems thinking that this is you know my life my wife my children my car my home my business my city my country that creates a burden in which if I try to take any of those things that belong to you or that you somehow think they belong to you, you go up in arms. They are coming here to take my country. You know, you have white nationalists saying this all the time. These foreigners are coming here to take my country and my jobs and my wife and everything. Who brought them there? Who caused the war in their country? It's amazing, you know what I mean? Like, it's just just us and them. It's never going to go away anyways. But I really think that this, again, possessiveness should definitely go away. This is why, you know, <laughs> I jokingly said, and this was, I think, either Glenn's idea or, or, or mine at some point, that fathers should not even know who their children are because... It doesn't matter if you're a good person. Every child is your child. Back to the joke of the father who goes to the kindergarten to pick up his child and says, I'm here to pick up my son. And the teacher says, which one is yours? It doesn't matter. Give me any. I'll just bring them back tomorrow. <laughs> if we reach that level of understanding that any child basically needs the same things, love and understanding and, you know, financial spiritual support you take a child you feed a child go and take him out to a playground read him a book put him to bed and bring him back tomorrow to school <laughs> it's that simple and this child is not to be abused by you for your own pleasure whatever that might be or not might not be and why do you need to abuse this child because your spouse is uh, you know angry at you so she won't have sex with you or you know something like that which is why number one thing is very important having that sex work if you are deprived if you feel deprived you have an outlet there is a healthy outlet for you go see a doctor tell a doctor look my wife and i have had problems i need this you know i mean again i'm simplifying simplifying things but you know this has to happen as well so yeah the abolishment of private property this is going to be completely, 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 completely the best thing ever, honestly. Again, all of these things are happening, you know, with one final solution in the end, which I'm going to reveal at the end of the podcast. In order for all these things to happen, to have, you know, legalized, legalization of love, you know, maybe I should change sex to, 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 to love. So legalize love or uh, monetize love let's monetize love and let's you know try the way to support the families and relationships and you know take the abolish the private property and next we'll talk about euthanasia which is also very important to have a way out so in order for all these things to do take place there's something else that really has to happen but again i'm going to reveal that final solution at the end uh that's it slowly and surely i'm kind of getting towards the end of these podcasts we're kind of halfway through it then we can move on to something more <laughs> more tantalizing i would say 
I hope everybody's having a great day. You know, enjoy yourselves. I love you all and I will see you in the next video. Please keep your mind open and keep your heart open. Because changes are everywhere and they are inevitable. Love you. Bye.